today I am going to uh, give a lecture on the basic aspect of financial management. That is, in financial management, a lot of things we teach the students as well as we send them for practical training but if they don't know the basic aspect of finance so that will be that creates a problem for them now the question is what is the basic we know that any finance manager in any company has to take three difficult decisions first one is financing decision second one is investment decision and third one is dividend decision now based on these three decision making areas a company's success or failure is very depends question is how these decisions the finance manager can take for this he has to depend on number of procedures, number of methods involving uh, various aspects of finance. So, to know those methods, those procedures, everyone must learn the basic components of all those methods like in, in any company it is very common that there are various aspects by which company can measure their profitability, they can measure the liquidity and even overall efficiency of management they can measure. So students generally study few things like leverage analysis for a company, then cost of capital finding process, then working capital management which is known as basically the main aspect of controlling companies day to day affairs and day to day financial activities. Students also must know the capital budgeting processes. Students must know how the capital structure decisions are taken. They must know how the dividend decisions and decisions are taken under various circumstances and various situations. So these are some basic things and above all, it is in my opinion, what I say that is, if anyone can grab a ratio analysis in a very good manner, then Nothing is better than that because ratio or ratio analysis or grabbing a strong hold on ratio analysis, students must know the balance sheet, specifically the corporate balance sheet under Schedule 6 of Companies Act. And a lot of items are there, but today I am going to discuss certain basic aspects related to the Schedule 6 balance sheet. I believe that without having a clear cut idea about uh, the balance sheet, no one can follow any process, any method 
But whatever it is in related to finance, no one can do that. Therefore, at the very beginning of finance, every student must know what are the items of Schedule 6 balance sheets and what are the meaning of those items, what are the utility of those items, how they are applied in various situations, in various cases, in various methods. Okay, so let us start with the Schedule 6 balance sheet. So, Schedule 6 balance sheet. First, let me tell that normal balance sheet students usually they have some idea that is, it is a statement of assets and liabilities, it is the true and fair view of the financial position of any company at any particular date, specifically uh, at the end of a uh, uh, financial year. So, like this. Even the students, uh, they must know, they genuinely know that balance sheet is a statement and it is a part of final accounts and they also know, I just uh, expecting that they know that what are the components of an account, that is the trading and profit loss account and balance sheet. But here, it is the corporate balance sheet, what they must have a very clear idea. Now first let me start with the Liabilities item. And then we will go for the assets side. So, in the liability side, this entire liability side or asset side is divided under some broad headings. Like in liability side, say the first item which appears which is must that is nominal capital now what is nominal capital And why it is closed with double line? The nominal capital has got another name, authorized capital. Authorized capital. Actually, the utility of nominal capital, it is clearly understood, it is clearly understood by the word authorized capital. That means it is that part of it is that level of capital beyond which the company cannot raise its capital base. Again I am repeating, it is that level of capital beyond which company cannot raise its capital base. Now the question is, say authorized capital is say 5 crores for any company. Say, let us take an example, 5 crores. Now, obviously the company 
cannot raise its share capital more than five crores. So anyone may ask that if there is a need, still isn't there any process by which the nominal capital limit can be raised? Yes, there is a process. That process is if the company wants to raise the price capital limit, company has to call extraordinary general meeting if it is really urgent. Now what is the urgent? I will give an example later on. Or it can revise the authorized capital limit in annual general meeting, AGM. Now when the urgency appears, suppose a company has got a very good investment opportunity, specifically it is a growth company, so very good investment opportunity it has got. Now question is, if it has got say 2 crore of share capital because I have told that authorized capital limit I have considered here for example it is 5 crore. So 2 crore share capital that is issued and paid up and subscribed share capital is 2 crores. The company's say retained earning it is another part of liability side the retained earnings say it is 1 crore means the company's own form that is 1 crore is all and company can maximum take a loan of rupees 2 crore from the bank because it has already earlier taken loan. So exposure limit either company may not want to go for more exposure for bank loan or even the consortium of banks, bankers, they may not allow the company to take further loan. Now If the project cost is say around 8 crores, so what company will do now? Will it allow to just give up the project? Will it allow to just withdraw from that opportunity? Or company should take certain measure so that it can grab the opportunity. Now what do you do? Share capital available is 2 lakhs, reserve fund available is 1, uh, sorry not 2 lakhs, 2 crores, reserve fund available is 1 crore and debt capital maximum from the bank company can get is 2 crores. So what is the total? 2 plus 1 plus 2 means 5. But the company requires 4 crore more to grab that opportunity. So now what is the way out? The way out is in this case company will suppose it will try to go for the debenture issue because debt capital is always cheaper than Share capital. So it can go for debenture issue. There also, company has to calculate that since both bank loan, long term bank loan, or the debenture, they come under secured loan. 
that means a company's total asset is available for keeping it as mortgage for bank loan as well as for remuneration. Now question is, say companies bank loan when it has taken so say around 75% of the total asset, total fixed asset company has kept mortgage with banks only 25% is left the fixed assets so maximum the company can go for debenture issue based on that 25% asset backing why is known as unsecured secure loan because these loans are backed by the assets means if the company is in a position to wind up in that case the long term fund suppliers debt fund suppliers like the banks or the debenture holders their claim will be generated first and by selling out the fixed assets of the company which is under mortgage for those respective loans or debenture issue those will be sold out to meet up that liability so that means definitely the company doesn't have sufficient fixed asset after keeping 75% of its fixed asset in the form of mortgage for the long term bank loan so with only 25% asset is fixed asset is left with them which is free asset company cannot fulfill the rest of the requirements of four rows or they will then if agm is very nearby so the management they ask existing shareholders in the agm whether they are approving for escalation of the price capital limit obviously for that the company management has to explain that what is the benefit of acquiring the project which is a profitable one so they have to clearly explain to the shareholders and after listening to them if the shareholders decide that okay fine uh, it has got a very good prospect for future and in future this project may help to move up the share value of the company in the market they may need the reason so the resolution must be passed in the agm or extraordinary general meeting which may be uh, conveying the at the time of urgent need for a total year also so anyhow if the resolution is passed by the shareholders in that case company can raise the price capital limit and can go for grabbing the opportunity of that profitable project so i think little bit of idea you have got here about what a price capital is and why it is close to the double line because it has no part in any calculation it is just a statement it is just a not statement it is just item in the balance sheet which shows that this limit is the maximum limit for raising fund in the form of capital and that's all so it doesn't have 
any direct implication for any calculation or anything. That's why it's closed by the double line. Okay, so now let me come to the next broad heading. That is issued paid up and subscribed capital issued paid up and subscribed capital so on the this this issued paid up and subscribed capital
first of all, if the company decides to wind up, as I told earlier also, the debenture holders of the bank loans, since they are asset backed, so they will be returned first. Then the subject creditors then unsecured loans. So these things will come step by step, then preferred share capital so and provided the company has gone. Creditors they must have to pay for unsecured loan and other cases. If the company has found, they will pay, otherwise it is a sale. The investor's money will go. Apparently, I am not entering into in-depth of the process because there are a lot of laws, bylaws, sections and all these things regarding this. I am not going to enter into that. But equity share capital, equity share holders, they preferably or in most of the cases, they don't get anything in case of a company's winding up. Then, you may ask that why the people will invest in equity share of a company? Usually, the people will invest in equity share of a company for two reasons. One is First factor that is capital gain, capital gain, and second factor is the Who is risk taker, the 
second one is this ever usually based on the age this resting ability is counted like if you before when you will step into the job market when you will start earning at the very beginning of your career so if you are a man of finance then you can start buying the start investing in the equity share and since it is just the beginning of your career you know that is the wrong way so a lot of money you can earn so automatically the youthful mind is able to accept the risk involved in equity share because the price of equity share once you are buying if it goes up and then if you sell it that is not as capital gain but side by side if the price goes down then you have purchase price and if you don't want to hold that so then you have to incur the capital loss that is the risk so what is the risk taking ability of an individual based on that he will go for equity share and basically if he is young basically young generation but exception is there for the older uh, people elder people now question is the second part is dividend usually the elder persons they with the increase in age the risk taking ability reduces therefore they want to be more safer side that means there is covered risk so they prefer dividend than capital gain now which type of investors will invest in which type of shares that is another area that is purely concerned with the dividend chapter lot of aspects of there based on which is the investors decide which type of share i should buy okay so let me tell in nutshell that when i went dirty to that area let me tell in nutshell that in the company life cycle the company has got three stages one is growth stage one is maturity stage and one is declining stage now two most famous finance wizards we can say for finance financial analysts finance researchers what every can say namely professor walter and professor god they have insisted that whenever a company is in growth stage it is better they either they don't declare equity dividend at all to retain the reserve fund or they go for bonus issue that is stock dividend so dividend can be paid in two ways one is cash one is stock stock dividend means bonus share so when the company is in growth stage it requires cash for investment because definitely investor investment opportunity is usually there in the growth stage so if the company doesn't declare dividend at all it sends a strong signal to the market that definitely the company has got some good project in their hand profitable project which will uh, give a beautiful return in future so in that case professor what is the that less dividend company will declare share price will be more but 
for metric stage whether the company is declaring dividend or not it has got no effect on share price but the companies which are in declining phase they don't have that much of profitable investment opportunities so their policy to retain its shareholders is to declare more and more dividend and if they declare more and more dividend the share price will go up now from this discussion quickly i can say that who are interested for investing in which type of company like the risk takers they are interested about the capital gains and it's only possible for the growth companies if they invest there and this is the retired persons or the risk averter old age persons if they want to invest in that is uh, in a company which is in its declining phase so they can be gain from two sides one is they will earn a regular dividend because it is generally the nature of the declining firms to allow and sorry to declare dividend regularly so they will earn dividend and if they want to sell their shares as per professor walter what i should what i have told right now that is if the declining companies pay more dividend The share price in the market goes up. So if they want, they can sell it out. So from both the sides, they are gaining. But generally, what happens? They don't want to sell it because it is a constant. If the company is a constant dividend payment track record, so in that case, they usually don't want to sell the shares. Similarly, Professor Gordon he has shown. The same thing in a different way. Now, so what has taken into the concept that is payout, and now the bottom has taken into the concept the retention means what company is paying out and what is there in the reserve fund. So, now the bottom has told that for the growth company, if The retention is more just opposite of Professor Walter, who told that not opposite, a similar to Professor Walter. He told that payout is least. Government's telling retention is most. Basically, both are got the same meaning. So then, the share price will go up. For the mature firms, Professor Gordon has also shown that high retention has got. no effect on the share price of the company and for the declining firms he also had shown that less the retention factor retention ratio for the company more the share price so basically the share market if you want to invest in share market basically think about this specifically in equity shares right so little bit of idea about what dividend is we have got now one word i used that is stock dividend or bonus issue what is that the if the company wants to capitalize its reserve the process is known as capitalization of reserve so if the company doesn't want in the growth stage that liquid cash will go out of the company i must begin it for upcoming investment proposals so in that case either they may not declare dividend at all or if they want that okay little bit of dividend also uh, i should consider for my shareholders so they want to go for this capitalization of reserve what is this that they transfer the total dividend amount what they have thought to distribute among the shareholders they will 
transfer it into the share capital account. And that equivalent amount of share it will be given to the existing shareholders. Like if I say that company has declared two stone mills shares, means for every two existing shares held by you, you will get one additional share from the company. So what is the benefit from the company side? That is liquid cash is retaining with the company. What is the benefit for the investors that they are getting one additional equity share if the market is in the booming stage? They can immediately go to the market after getting the shares in hand or in their account. If they go to the market and sell it out, they may gain, there is a possibility they may gain more than what they would get if the company would have declared cash to There is one operating proposition. Or since it is a share, if the market is down, okay, no problem. Shareholders will hold the share. They will wait when the market will go up. Then they will sell it. No problem. But anyhow, company is declaring dividend. Side by side, company is increasing its capital base. Within, obviously, within the authorized capital limit. Not costing that, not violating that. So it is more or less about equity share capital, uh, equity share holders, why they invest. Why they are interested in investing in equity share capital like this. Now, the second type of share that is preference share capital, basically the shareholders of preference share, they have got preference share right. What is that? That is a matter of law. Uh, that is a matter of company affairs. So I am going to that. Now, but one thing I will say that preference share capital, these preference shares have got, the, it is a mixture, the characteristics wise, it has got a mixture of equity and debt. That means debenture. Because in preference share, the dividend rate is fixed. When it is issued, at that time it is told that 14% preference share will be issued. That means 40% dividend uh, preference shareholders will get. Which is the characteristics of the dividend? Bank loan, the interest is fixed. What the company will have to pay? But why for the preference share? For the debt capital, company will have to pay interest whether it is earning profit or not. This they are bound to pay. But the thing is, for preference share capital, the, eight, the company has got the liberty of not paying the dividend. But one catch point is there, that is, if the company cannot pay dividend, preference dividend for the first year, it can pay in the second year or third year, but company will have to pay the accumulated dividend at that time. Or if the company cannot pay dividend for consecutive three years, that preference dividends are basically lost. There is no mandate on the company that they will have to give that preference dividend. That's wrong. No. Again, from the fourth year, it will start as year one. Now, one point is there, one catch is there, that is, if the company wants to declare equity dividend, they must pay preference dividend first, then they will declare equity dividend. As I told that three years preference, share, preference dividend company may not pay. But for those three years company will never be allowed to declare equity dividend. 
So that is the difference between preference share and equity share. But one thing, please keep in mind that usually when the companies declare equity dividend, basically it is a very high level, lump sum, 30 percent, 40 percent, 50 percent. So that is another look at the area for equity share. They don't declare dividend, fine. But if they, they declare dividend, say for the past two years they haven't declared the dividend, the third year they are going to declare the dividend. So it will definitely be on the higher side. So 50 percent, 60 percent dividend, dividend they can declare. Now the question is, dividend declaration for equity share capital, it is not mandatory. Please note this point, please keep in mind. It is not mandatory. It is totally depending on the company management, what they are deciding. Right? So, these are more or less, preferred share uh, can be of various types that is the part of the portfolio management, investment analysis, portfolio management, the different types of shares, different types of different shares, uh, what are prevailing in the market. So that is available in that area in the social engineering. Now the third Property. That is results and supplies. The results and surplus. Results and surplus. That is the third dot heading. Loss 
then you will write down everything that is PLI account debit. Now, obviously, that comes under the asset head. 